My presentation today will be about the importance of developing long-term scenarios to try to guide both public decision-making processes and private decision-making processes uh, to uh, a successful decarbonization of economies. And uh, the presentation will be based on a project that we developed at IDRI with about 20 countries now and more than 25, 30 um, groups uh, in all of these countries that is named the Deep Decarbonization Pathway Project. And we started this project uh, on the road to Paris uh, to try to prepare a different ground for the Paris discussion. Um, because for years the discussion about decarbonization was very much based on the short-term vision of where opportunities would, uh, would be to at least cost, uh, try to reduce uh, carbon emissions. And uh, we had a sense that we needed a new narrative, uh, and this new narrative was about the question that all countries need to face, which is what does it really take if you want to decarbonize an economy? And uh, it may look complicated to uh, face this in a policy decision-making process where we have a lot of short-term priorities, but um, de facto when we did the exercise with all those countries, what we discovered is that instead of making things more complicated, uh, it would open much more opportunities to, uh, to size the, th this radical transformation of deep decarbonization and respond to other challenges that that country have in terms of social economic development. And so um, the result of this project is that first all these countries where we have for instance China, Brazil, South Africa, uh, Germany, France, the US, uh, etc. So very different countries. All countries did produce vision or visions uh, of possible deep decarbonization pathway by 2050 where on the one hand we found um, similarities, uh, similar patterns of decarbonization based on three pillars. Uh, one which is very important is uh, energy efficiency and we need to improve energy efficiency. But the second one uh, is the need to um, develop new energy careers. One is electricity but other energy careers such as decarbonized gas for instance or sin fuels etc. are also important and it's this mix of efficiency and new energy careers that make it possible then to decarbonize the supply of energy. But at the same time what we discovered and was interesting is that in each country we had very specific expectations in terms of social economic development, very specific initial situation for the transition and for that reason for each country we also had a very different narrative of the transition and this narrative of the transition is key to try to um, get traction on political decision-making processes to involve stakeholders and uh, this I think was one of the important uh, results of the, of the study. The second element that I want to present is that at the same time there, there's a paradox in this approach uh, which is um, we try to um, we, we, we try to define avenues to the future and so to create some certainty in policies, uh, but at the same time we have uncertainties on the future. Obviously we don't know exactly what technologies would be available, we don't know exactly how policies will deliver or not deliver, and therefore there is a paradox in trying to uh, define policies and at the same time recognizing that there is uncertainty. And I will present a couple of examples on the, on the French discussion on the energy transition to show that based on this approach and this methodology, we not necessarily need to solve all uncertainties, but we can agree also on a common, I would say, uh, a common plan for action on the short term, that at the same time we prepare the ground for the future and will be resilient to these uncertainties that we need to face.